This morning we had a lesson on cannibals and uh, and uh, take heed. The Bible said, uh, lest you bite and devour and be consumed one of another. And I had a vision one day and saw a woman's heel disappearing down another one's throat. Who? It's like my little granddaughter said, yuck. That's what she says when something just kind of upsets her. She says, yuck. But that's what's happened to a lot of people in the church world. They've devoured each other. And the, the book said, take heed lest you bite and devour and be consumed one of another. And then we preached this morning after that, LL, he trusts me. I really appreciate the confidence he has put in me. He didn't worry about me trying to ruin his church. You just can't turn anybody and everybody loose to preach for you unless you know something about them. Because, you know, some people don't ever think of what it does to others. All they think of is themselves, you know. Well, you can't live like that and be happy. But I do appreciate, Brother Sister Collins, and i never seen a church give like you all give. I, 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 I'll tell you what, I'd preach for you for nothing. I'd do it in a minute. Yes, sir, I would. But I do thank you for helping me. The Lord knew my needs, and I thank you. Forty-five years. I, now, nobody, don't, don't take offense at me now, but uh, when I was a boy, the Lord went to dealing with me to preach, and, and, uh, and I went out for 45 years, never been on a roster roll, never been a member of a church anywhere. I've never been a registered Democrat or Republican. I searched my uh, birth uh, certificate out the other day, and it don't have my name on it. I can't even prove I'm here. My birth certificate, it's seen in Oklahoma, September 20, 1925, where it says name of child. There's not a thing in the world on that birth certificate. The original birth certificate don't even have my name on it. I wasn't a prophet or a prophet's son. Wasn't cut out to be a preacher at 62 and nearly 63. And I haven't been able to say this, but I can say to you, God sent me. I can say the Lord sent me. Going, going to Oklahoma City, Spirit touched me and said, Stop at the university hospital. I stopped and walked in the lobby, and when I did, uh, uh, Brother York's brother, the county commissioner, met me and said, J.O.'s gone, L.D., he's gone. I said, Don't believe a word of it. Yeah. I went up to the fifth floor and walked in the room, and there stood a preacher on the other side of the bed. J.O. was supposed to be dead. Nurse on this side still standing there. When I walked up, she Backed out of the road, I thought, that's it, sis, just back out. There ain't nothing you can do no how. Yeah. Prayed about five minutes for that feller, and he opened his eyes and said, Hello, son, he is older than I am. Said, How in the world are you? Yeah. Well, we buried him the other day, and what I'm talking about took place 25 years ago. Yeah. And just the other day, at 80-some years of age, he went on to glory world. One of the greatest preachers we had in Oklahoma. Yeah. Last time I went to see him, he was sick, Lynn. And he said, I just read the Bible through again, Brother Moore, I guess 60 times. He said, I read it through on my knees this time. And him a sick man. Read her through on his knees and him sick. Well, won't that be a hallelujah meeting when we step on the other side? We pick and have a time. <laughs> hallelujah. We will hear Elijah singing over there. And it's trip up in the air, and the whirlwind that was fair over there. There'll be no one there to pout when we all begin to shout. There'll be none to put us out over there. I got back to the door a while ago, and my old buddy sitting yonder guarding the door. I, I went by him and hollered glory. I said to just well shout in the back of it as we had in the front, hadn't we? Went by the water fountain, got me a little sup of that H2O, and I had another little shout, started down the stairs and had another shout. I said, this ain't a honky tonk. This don't belong to the people that runs the dance hall. This is God's house. That ought to be able to shout anywhere in it. The basement, anywhere on the property, ought to be able to shout. I like what Frank preached, didn't you? I like that boy. The only thing I've got to say to him is take it easy, son. Don't explode. Just hang in there good and steady. Don't tire your nerves up with worrying about it. 
pray and believe God for it and go right on. He's doing a great work. They cannot shell his temple nor night him his throne. They cannot bomb his city nor rob him of his own. They cannot take him captive nor strike him deaf and blind nor starve him to surrender nor to make him change his mind. They cannot cause him panic nor cut off his supplies. They cannot take his kingdom nor hurt him with their lies. Though all the world be shattered, his truth remains the same. His righteous law still potent and father still his name. Though we face war and struggle and feel their golden rod, we know above confusion there always will be God. Hallelujah. I am what I am. I am what I will be. I was, I am to Abraham, and I am, I am to thee. Go down into Egypt land and say, I am sent me. I was, I am to Abraham, and I am, I am to thee. Tell them I'll send the frogs and flies and lice upon this land. They will soon find out the great I am is not a mortal man. I am what I am, am what I will be. I was, I am to Moses, and I am, I am to thee. I am, said to Pharaoh, a choice I give to thee. Let my people go at once, or awful things you'll see. I am what I am, I am what I will be. I was, I am to Moses, and I am, I am to thee. That's mine. I have no steep practice on it till I make a song out of it. You ain't never heard nobody sing that. You have the infringing upon my rights. I just wrote that down going down the road the other day. It makes sense. If it don't make sense, I ain't even got time for it. Now, don't get mad if you do. Be careful with it. We'd we'll have to pray for you in a minute. Your blood get up high. You have a stroke or something. Don't get mad. But I ain't got time for a bunch of long, hard hippies to wearing chains around the neck and ear bob and acting like women and, 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 and writing my spiritual songs for me now. All right, now, you, you live like you live. I live like I live. But I'm going to tell you what. I believe spiritual people write spiritual songs, and I don't think people not spiritual write spiritual songs. Don't believe it. I am what I am. Present tense. I am what I will be. I was, I am to Abraham, and I am, I am to thee. Thank God right now. I am the way, did he say it? The truth and the life, the great I am still here. Same I am that said, when they ask you, who sent you? Tell them I am sent you. I like that I am business, don't you? When Grandpa's old, I am is here. When Grandpa was young, I am this year. I'm the door. Well, I am what I am. I am what I will be. I was, I am to Moses, and I am, I am to thee. I think me and Jeff get together on that and practice that a little, and he can beat out me a little time on it, and we make a song out of that. I believe you could. Standing over in Moore, Oklahoma, several months ago in my church, and the Lord wasn't having his way, and I knew it. And I stood up there in the corner of the platform. Spirit moved on and said, Why don't you do what the Lord said to do? Why don't you do what the Lord said to do? The question has been asked. Answers up to you. Why don't you do what the Lord said to do? It's a good question. Why don't you give like the Lord said to give? Why don't you give like the Lord said to give? The question has been asked. Answers up to you. Why don't you do what the Lord said to do? You know a good way to get healed? Do what the Lord said. Arthur Davis was down there in Subiaco, Arkansas. Sick as he could be in the middle of the night. God spoke to him there in the mountains. I've been right there. Said, Autry, if you'll get up out of bed and go into the cornfield and offer prayer, I'll heal you, Frank. That's what God told Autry David. He got up and staggered into his overalls so sick and weak he couldn't hardly stand. Had to hold the door facing. And he didn't tell his wife nothing. Went out through the moonlight up into that cornfield on the side of that mountain. Knelt sick as he was when he got out of bed. Said, God, I thought you told me if I'd come here, you'd heal me. God jerked him up off the ground. He shouted the rocks off the side of the mountain in Arkansas in the midnight, dancing in the spirit, healed by the power of God. Well, 
Time would fail us to tell. Do you hear all these healings here? This ain't this boy ain't given to lying, is he? Nope. He don't ever lie about nothing. I know what he did before I asked you. I just wanted to witness on it. But what oh, you hear what he told? I may not even get to my message tonight. This is the third one today. Hallelujah. But you know Jeff Utter had that back problem so bad that his right leg went to sleep and tingle on him, you know, and lost the circulation. And he walked the railroad at night. We drove hundreds of miles, sent Hanks to haul Hanks months and months. He cried, called me crying on the other end of the way tonight. I'm hurt so bad I can't hardly live, Eldy. Went to a great physician. He said, X-ray said, got to operate on you. Uh, got to perform surgery. It's the only thing will ever in the world help you. Well, they said, would you wait just a few days? We're going to have a little revival down in the church. Started revival. They prayed for him nearly every night. He never did feel nothing much. They just prayed by faith, prayed for him. But by the end of the meeting, he is getting better. He's getting better. Went back to doctor. Doctor x-rayed him, checked him out again, checked his reflexes. Where have you been, he said. Wichita, Kansas, 2104 Wellington Place. He said, where have you been? He said, just been to church. Been in prayer. Why, he said, son, I can't find one thing in the world. Here's the other x-ray, and here's this one. Here it is, and this one, and here it ain't, and this one. He said, I can't. All I can do is turn you loose. Twenty years went by. He didn't die with that. No, sir. Jeff Utter went on the glory, but he didn't die with that. He come to see me. I live in the country. I'm on way of water. The possums and skunks are in my yard when I drive in after church. I'm out in the country there. I live right. I said, Lord, he come to see me. Would you show me you've healed him? I know you healed. I never asked you this before, but I... And you know, next morning I got up early to go to the job. I was working on down there. Just a poor preacher working, pastor church, trying to make it go. And looked out at the left in, inside my yard, and I got a long yard. I was out in the road driving down, and Jeff had got up at 536, I reckon. He was running and jumping in the air like a deer. Just as soon as his feet hit the ground, run a few more and jump in the air like a deer. When I got to the end of the property and headed south, I was crying, and he was going north, running wide open. You don't run wide open when you had what he had before God healed him. Well, you can have it if you want it. You can have it like the Bible said. It's for you. It's for you. It's for you like the Bible said. You can be saved. You can be saved. You can be saved like the Bible said. You can have it if you want it. God will help you. I'd like to encourage you. I've got to, I've got to say a few words to you and get me back from whence I came and go somewhere else. But it's been a blessing to be here, share your songs with you, hear your choir, see your uh, youth director here, and hear Brother L.L. and Sister Collins again. Meet my friends that's here. We're not going to get to move up here with you. We're not going to get to do that, but once in a while we'll meet. And at last, let's meet around that great throne eternal and have one song service like you've never heard. You're going to face God whether you believe He's real or not. You're going to face God whether you think He made the world or not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to talk on a real simple talk, the only kind I've ever used for that matter. Words I want to hear. I sang an old song, I want to hear the angels singing, Oh, welcome home and be made whole. I'm headed home on a one-way ticket. The joy I feel can never be told. I want to hear the angels singing, Oh, welcome home and be made whole. I'm sailing home on a one-way ticket. The joy I have can never be told. I want to hear the angels sing. Some words I want to hear. Oh, I'd love to hear some words I know I can't hear tonight. I'd love to hear Mama say, Rusty, where have you been? That's what she always called me because I played marbles. And I st stayed on my knees so much I'd go take a bath. I never did wash them good. Uh, she'd always have to get on about my rusty knees. <laughs> and she nicknamed me Rusty. That's what Mama always called me was Rusty. When I was here preaching and she died, sis called and said she's gone. I was right here. And and uh, all the week before she went away, sis said there in Mexico, she's, somebody walked by the door and she said, Was that Lester? I'd like to kill me if she left, you know. Said, That looked like Lester. Was that him? But when she met me, she said, Rusty. I would love to hear her. mother say, Rusty. Where have you been? That's the reason I sang that lilac bouquet so much for my mother. Your mother gone? We miss them, don't we? 
want to talk a while about words I want to hear. You know, there's people that does things, they don't want a bunch of rewards. You take a woman that cooks good. You know Vince Wilson. Did you all know Vince? How many knew Vince Wilson? Well, he had lots of friends. Thank you. Raise your hand for him. I wouldn't be surprised why he's seen it. I have strange beliefs about Helen. <laughs> I don't know. You wouldn't agree with me. I better not get into all that. But I, you know what? Uh, Vince is down in Texas County, and they wanted me to go by and see him. They were going to get me to preach in the camp meeting. And I went by. He was on the board. They wanted me to talk with him. And I went in a house, and uh, Vince is in there in the kitchen eating with him, and I didn't. I'd already ate. And, and I noticed they passed everything to him. I happened to glance and watch him. And he never took anything but biscuits and butter. Turned everything else down. And he eat about four biscuits and butter. And I said, I need to talk to him when this is over. Now, preachers are sad. I know it. But I said, he's going to hurt himself and hurt them sisters' feelings so bad everywhere he goes. If that's the way he does, I need to tell him to come out of that. Eat some of that other stuff. After he eat four biscuits and butter, that woman's face as long as mine, and I have a horse's head, you can tell by looking just like a horse's head. And that woman's face is long and, and dreary and sad looking. And, and I thought, oh, she's so hurt, and she was. And then Vince said, would you pass the, would please pass the beans, Mom? Would you please pass the gravy, Mom? Would you please pass the potatoes, Mom? He liked to eat everything else on the table. That woman's face turned from gloom to gladness. Yeah. All a woman wants to hear sometimes is, I'll tell you, this is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is some of the best potatoes I ever ate. Yes, sir. Vince was great at eating cornbread and milk and stopping right in the middle of it four or five times to say, Bless God. Hallelujah. This is good. Right. Walk five or seven miles. Never learned to drive. He's over 55 years old. Right. Walk six, seven miles in the mountains. Sit down to some folks' house. You're hungry, Brother Vince? Say, you have any milk and a pound of cornbread? Get him a big old bowl and get that milk and a pound of cornbread. And in there, he'd, he'd take a few bites and smack his lips and say, Thank God this is good. All oh, some folks want to hear is a few words. All oh, some mothers listening for some old boy to say, Mom, if that ain't the best pumpkin pie you ever made, I'd like to know why. Yeah. That's all she wants to hear. All some folks just want to hear is somebody say, I love you. They're not worried about whether they get any money out of you or not. A good mother, mother's date can come. Son forget to send a card and daughter not send a thing and just call up and say, Mom, we love you. That's just all right. Hey, that's as good as I need right there. You can't get a driving word out of Mama. Of course, if I get around and meet him on the side, I say, why in the world didn't you send her something, boy? You quit getting so busy you can't send your mama a little something. I mean, when they ain't even my children to do them like that. That's preachers for you. I don't want to talk to you a while about some words I want to hear. Hallelujah. From the Bible, the greatest book that ever was written, comes the words falling upon the eardrums of the human family. It means more than any words we've ever heard. Here they are from Matthew 25 and 14. Bible talking to us again. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling in the far country, called his own servants, delivered unto them his good. Under one he gave five talents to another two. Another one. Uh, every man according to several abilities, and straightway took his journey. Then he had received the five talents, went and traded with the same, made other five talents. Likewise, he that received two, he gained other two. He that received one, digged in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and reckoned with them. I'd like to call your attention again to the 14th verse. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling in a far country. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with him, with them. And so he that received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents, before the whole have gained besides him five more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. That verse and those words I read to you, I would love to hear. I do appreciate the compliments our friends give us. We cannot live without them. At times we need them severely. But oh, one day when it's over, one day when we meet the King, one day when we meet our Lord, I just want to hear him say, well done. Well done. My father was the greatest welder ever welded with. He and I welded more tool joints in nine hours than any two welder in the state of Oklahoma. You don't know that so, do you? But I told you. 
Hardest working man I worked with was my father. But, oh, if Daddy said it's a good job, I didn't worry about no boss. I never worried about no boss, nowhere, not passing on if my daddy passed on it. My earthly father, he was particular. He meant for it to be right. One day we're going to face our heavenly father. We're going to face Jesus Christ our Lord. Now listen, friend, it won't be how successful you've been here. It won't matter how successful you've been here. It won't get you by because you paid your bills and you gave to the Salvation Army and the Red Cross and come to church and baptized in water. No, sir. But if you haven't done well, if you haven't done His commands, if you haven't done His bidding so He can say, Well done, you're going to go join that crowd that's going to hear them words that they won't like. Well done. Some words I want to hear. Well done. Thou good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over gobs and gobs and gobs of stuff. You outrun and outjumped and outdone everybody that lived all around you. Your name was heralded all over the world. You've done the greatest things there was. No. Well done. Don't get excited about things you can't do. Bless my heart in the world. I, I know some folks that wanting to go across the world to China. Well, what in the world are you doing in China? Can't testify in the home church and can't get to service three times a week. What in the world would you do curl there in China? Right. Brighten the corner where you are. I'm going to tell you something, brother. I'm going to tell you something, old buddy, back there at the door. When L.D. comes back through the country again, he won't know where you at. He'll want to know where you at. He'll want to know where you at. You boys that's here and stood here and stayed here and prayed here. Listen, don't worry about going somewhere else if God's put you here. Stay where you're at and do the work of God and be faithful over a few things. You ever see anybody start something and never finish it? Start something and never finish it? Start something and never finish it? Start something. Oh, get a few things done. Get a few things finished for the Lord. Well done. Don't you want to hear some good things? <laughs> oh, glory to God. Talk to you a little while. It won't take me long. I'm all out. So I ain't going to preach for about an hour, hour and a half at the most probably here. 31st chapter. Well done, he said. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to set you over a bunch of things. You used to have a boy, had a boy in the church at home, worked hard in the place he worked. Foreman done him wrong, didn't do him right. He said, I'm a quitting. I said, you can always do that. Why be a quitter? You can always quit. Go into the man that owns it. Go to the top people. Go to the man in charge. Tell him your problem before you quit him. Well, he said, I will. He went in and told Bob what's happening. Bob said, don't you quit. You stay here like I check this out. If you ain't telling me right, I want to know it. If you are, I want to know it. You hold this. What's that? You know who got to be foreman? You guessed it. You guessed it. You guessed it. Hang in there. Make the best of it. Do the best you can. Be faithful. Be true. You'll get to hear some words after a while that millions upon millions wish they could hear. When at last we stand before them, they wish they could hear that. Well done. Hallelujah. Here, here it is in the 30, uh, first verse uh, of the same chapter. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory with all His holy angels with Him. Great God is bringing Michael and Gabriel with Him. Bringing all His holy angels. Then He shall shut upon the throne of His glory. Won't that be a sight? And before Him shall be gathered all nations. They ain't going to get away. No, sir. God's going to call them to record here. He shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from his goats. You don't have to tell. I can't tell hardly. I didn't even know Clark Gable had a plate for a long time. He was a nice looking, bless his heart. And, but he, had a, he had, a, had a plate. If he'd have took it out, there wouldn't have been near as many women in love with him. But we'll be what we are. You may have Joe's heart in you and Mary's kidney in you and someone else's eye in you. Yeah. But you'll be yourself when you meet God. Right. Amen. 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 That's right. We're going to be ourselves when we meet God. You know, old boy down home is a sinner. He said, more. When they get that artificial heart perfected, folks can't die. I say, yes, they can. And one did. Had to shut the heart off after he died. Had to shut the heart off. It's still pumping blood. They had to shut the heart off after he died. So then death is not whether or not you have an artificial or a real heart. And it's not necessarily whether or not the blood is still pumping through your veins. Death is the last enemy that God will destroy. And it gets people that have just been to the doctor and give a perfect bill of health and they die on the way home and they run an autopsy and can't find what killed them. It's happened time and again. Never didn't know what killed them. That's what got them. That's what got them.
death is the last enemy that God will destroy. And it gets people that have just been to the doctor and give a perfect bill of health and they die on the way home and they run an autopsy and can't find what killed them. It's happened time and again, never didn't know what killed them. This what got them, that's what... This not a heart attack, this not a cancer, this, this not TB. It's the enemy of God. And it's liable to get you, boy, before you get out of here. Just closed Bristol, Oklahoma down the first night. Brother Blue preached on, there's a dead man in the house. Man died halfway through that meeting, right on my left, right back there in that audience. A man died while he is preaching. Another old man sitting there died two days later. Dead man in the house. God meant for people to know that you can die. Not a thing wrong with you. Die just like that. Going to call them to this great judgment. All the dead. And he's going to separate them. He knows. Then shall the king say to them in his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. How wise is God? You don't know and I don't either. But he prepared them a kingdom from the foundation of the world. That's, that's a way on back. Well, it's not as far back as science says it is. They trying to tell me how old this world is. They don't know. How old was the world when God got it finished? Six days. If we'd have rested the seventh and cut a big tree down the eighth, how many rains would it have had in it? He didn't have no big trees. Did he have any high mountains or low valleys? Was any rocks on, on them mountains or in them valleys where water had run over them and wore them and had creases and crevices in them? If so, how long did it take the water to wear the creases and crevices in them? Well, six days, I guess. Carbon Black series full of holes. And we take the opinion of one little fella, Darwin, was that his name? 25 years old that went around the world and seen some folks that looked like gorillas on an island and said, we come from a gorilla. So I got 10 folks look like gorillas. That old theory the world pushes of evolution is so full of holes it won't hold air. There's nothing to it. Even the carbon black theory. Even the theory of how old the world is. I'm going to tell you the only way to know anything about God is get acquainted with Him. The only thing to real know anything about His world, get acquainted with Him. Hallelujah. You don't have to be smart. You just pray. Glory to God. How old was Adam when God got through with him? How long did he crawl? How long did it take him to say, Dad, Dad? Not long, he's naming things right, right soon after God created him. So there ain't no way to run that theory, make it hold up. You hear the other day, what happened called the glaciers? A great big something roared through the heavens millions of years ago and busted the earth and threw water so high it congealed and froze and made the great glaciers. I thought, bless my heart, I can think of one that beats that. And I can tell a story that beats that. And just believe what some fellow says that says there's no God. When Mr. Uh, Lakey discovered the oldest remains that exist on the face of the earth, do you know where he found them? Over there in Ethiopia, where God had the Garden of Eden and the beginning of civilization. Makes me believe in God more. <laughs> they found a woman's bone. They said, Lord, behold, it's a million years old. They don't know that. I ain't trying to be smart. I'm just telling you, want to hear some words from God Almighty that made the world and rules the world. Want to hear from Him. I can't get no consolation out of this other bunch. I'm off my, off my message. I do. I get plumb off of it sometimes. Yeah. That's a fault I've got. But you know what? They took an impression of a molar in that jawbone of that woman said was a million years old. Had a lady in their crew of their hip and peck on them rocks and digging that sand. And they took an imprint of hers. Oh, they said they're almost exactly the same. I said, walk on back. Get on back. You get back to Eve's body after a while and find out her molar's just like the modern day woman's. Yeah. They found some tracks. They said it was over a million years old under two foot of volcano with ash. Well, preserved the tracks. They, they was human, uh, humanoid. Humanoid. Is that what they call them? Yeah, humanoid tracks, you know. And, and, uh, and, and it's a big set of footprints. And behind them was a smaller set of footprints. No knuckle prints. No knuckle prints. They said, evidently, this is the footprints of a man and a woman walking behind him. And they're a million years old. I said, get on back. Get on back. You'll find where the garden's at in a minute, and you'll find them same footprints walking through the garden. Yeah, sure God Almighty is going to call all the nations before Him. Separate them one from another shepherd. Now, Lord, now this is a member of my church. He ought to be on the right to the left with you. Now, Lord, we've known these folks years to the left with them. You can't fool God. 
You can't fool God. Don't you want to hear some good words? You're going to die, man. I don't care how much you make. I don't care how much money you got. I've got friends that's millionaires. They don't die. I've been there when the rich is dead. God has no respect under the rich or the poor. When it comes time to go, we just take Don't you want to hear some good words after all? I want to hear him say, when it's all over, everything's stopped. All the factories are shut down. All the thunder and lightning's quit. All the storms have blown away. And we appear before God. I want to hear him say, well done. I love what people tell me. I appreciate them saying you did well. But children, what we need to hear worse than anything else is at the last, the final round, well done. I once heard the story of a sainted old mother who had lived out her life here on earth as she lay on her deathbed and her friends stood around her. These are the last words she said. Oh, look what I traded for a mansion. Oh, look what I'm leaving behind. Oh, look who will be there to greet me when I step in the sweet paradise. I'm leaving behind all my sorrow. I'm leaving behind all my care. I'm going to live in a mansion that Jesus has gone to prepare. Her hands were so feeble and her voice was so low. But she still had a smile on her face. As her friend stood around her, she said, I hear singing and they're calling for me. And she looked toward heaven and said, Oh, look what I'm trading for a mansion. Oh, them old souls that lived in Oklahoma so poor, they made their dress out of the flower sacks. I was raised like that. Great God, to eat on a dirt floor, eat with, in the kitchen with a dirt floor on the table that had a dirt floor under it. We fried them rabbits and eat them because we had to have something to eat. I was raised with poor people, lived in, 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 in a, a cellar. Some of them had to live in a cellar. Oh, look what I'm trading for a mansion. I want to hear something after a while. I've heard a lot, and I enjoy a lot of things I hear. But don't you want to hear the angels sing? Don't you want to hear God say, well done, boy? I won't have to hurry. Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared from you from the foundation of the world. I'm going to take you where they don't get hungry. I'm going to take you where they don't work for a living. I'm going to take you where the hot sun will never hurt them anymore. Atmosphere is always just right. Going to take you whether not a cold gray marble slab a thousand miles or as big as the place is. You'll never find nobody buried, nobody sick, nobody dying, nobody sad, nobody grieving. Well done. Well done. Who want to hear it? Fifth chapter of John. A few things I want to hear in life. Some words I'd like to hear. Certain man was there which had infirmity 38 years and nobody cared. Jesus saw him lying, knew it had been a long time in that case. He said, Wilt thou be made whole? I'd like to hear him say it to me. While I live here, some words I'd like to hear. He said, Wilt thou be made whole? What would you like to get up out of it? You know, I don't know. Now, don't you get mad now, because I got to go back to Oklahoma. I ain't got time to go eat with you. I love to go eat with folks gets mad at me. Just love to eat with people who gets mad at me. But I ain't going to have time to get around now. I'm going to have to leave. But you know, I believe I've met some folks that liked what they had too well. Wilt thou be made whole? Don't forget the sore shoulder. Well, if you've got one, we want to remember it until you get well. But if God heals you, don't bring it up anymore, will you? Yes, and you're going to get angry at me if I tell you what the Lord deal with me about. As an individual in this house, they've got attention so long by grunting and groaning until they ain't going to quit it. I don't care what you say. They get the attention that way. I was down <coughs> preaching in Arkansas, and as a spirit hit a fellow, and, and he went down homesick, and sounds mean out of me. If it wasn't the Lord, it would have been. And, and uh, I went and prayed for him and, and said he got healed and he come back. The attention is what he needed to get out of bed. Got out in California in a family reunion, got mad again out there and had another fit and took down on him. Took him to the doctor and he tapped on him and checked on him. Said, there ain't nothing in the world wrong with him. Said, he's just throwing fits. That's all the world that's wrong with him. Same thing wrong with that old woman out there by Blanchard. An old doc cop went out and he could tell it and wasn't even saved. And told his helper to go out there in the yard and find the willow worm. He made a little slit on the back. You hear what I'm saying? I know what. I've had a retired doctor on my board over there in one church. That he rolled that woolly worm in blood. Then he got out of her bag and showed her what he cut out of her. And she got well and there was sick no more. Do you hear me? Cobb, KOLB, Blanchard, Oklahoma. is in the grave now. (laughs) 
He wanted to be healed. He wanted to get well. He didn't want to have to ask for prayer every time they prayed for the sick. Don't you quit being prayed for. There's something wrong with you. You get yourself on up here every time they pray till you get well. But Frank, if God heals you in the name of God, don't bring that up no more. That's right. Oh, why? My back. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with your back. You're going to get a bad back. Don't tell me nine churches and 45 years of preaching, I've dealt with you, children. Some of you just wants attention. I used to go visit a sister. How you feeling, sis? Oh, I've been hurt my right side, brother Moore. Then I said, I'm going to try that another way. I went to see her. I said, oh, and I had had. I wouldn't lie. I said, I've had a headache. Oh, I've had it all morning. One day I went and I'd had a little sore spell on my foot. I said, I've had a sore foot. I've had a sore foot about all week. Yeah, like sure enough. Yeah. You know, I said, we're going to go shopping today over at Sears. And I know you're knocked out and can't. Oh, yeah, I can go. Bless my heart. I believe I'm willing. And walk me, walk me down all over Sears, me and wife. That woman walk us down. Yeah. Don't forget me. I won't be able to come with you tonight. I'm sick. Now, don't you get mad at me, but we're a touchy bunch. But this old boy was down for 38 years, and he heard a voice say, Wilt thou be made whole? You won't be able to raise your hand for prayer for your body now when I get through with you. You'll have to give it up. I'd rather hear them words, Wilt thou be made whole, and do like you done, son. Give it up. Give it up. You know, I pastored a fellow stinking lazy that he went to exploratory surgery and the doctor said he got the best looking set of guts I ever seen in a human. <laughs> well, I guess all to know I pastored him for years. His wife had to work. He could cook biscuits. He could work at home. See if his ladies wanted to. Get up and want to. They never could work. Yeah. What? Nothing wrong with him. Who pray, deacon or elder, whatever you are, trustee, pray. I didn't think about preaching like this on words I want to hear. If he'd tell you you was healed tonight, what would you do? I'm going to preach a while longer on some words I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear him when I'm sick say, Wilt thou be made whole? Any way you fix it, Lord, it's all right with me. Any way you fix it, I just want to be well and let him fix it like he wants to, but I want to hear them words. Grandpa died of a heart attack, 42-year-old. My mother's father in Norman, Oklahoma. And I went to my mama laid up. I don't know how many times that she's dying with heart trouble. Forever got saved, I asked God to heal my mama. I'm not about God. I heard this God. I've got her. About all I know. And you know, 45 years of preaching, that lying devil slipped up to me. I don't know how many times I said, That's it, L.D. Mm -hmm. That's a heart attack you're having right now. Yeah, you got heart trouble. <laughs> you got it. Can't you feel your heart beating? Well, I come to think of it, I'm glad I could. You know. <laughs> Did you see it beating pretty hard? Well, thank God it's a pumping good. You know. Devil is a liar. He is a liar. This is all of it. Me and your age dies every day. Well, they do. This is it. You know how to keep it from being it? Doing the will of God. Preaching tonight on a simple thought. I wish I wasn't so wore out. I wanted to preach about two hours for you because I know you needed it. <laughs> if it's necessary for human body to eat two or three times a day, hell else is necessary for spiritual man to eat. You got to have a little jubilation, a little vibration, vitality, a little what they call... Uh, I didn't know we even had Adam, or I, I, I didn't even know about vitamins. I was a great big old boy. I'd eat a jug of them they told me. I didn't know nothing about vitamins. Didn't know there was such a thing. Wilt thou be made whole? Sir, I have no man on the water shovel he wanted to. He wanted to get in that. He went to Wigland every time that, that water turned over every year. If I could just see him something lay close enough, I'd get in there. No. Somebody, nobody would help him. No nobody would help him. You know what Jesus said to him? Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. 
healed him just like did that woman in Arkansas prayed for her 60 years old and broke her leg and it wouldn't knit back and the bones wasn't right and they couldn't fix it and they tried to fix it she got there to that altar and, and come up right to be prayed for painted up she's just a sinful woman but she sat down and prayed for her she jumped up and ran around around the altar and said I can walk preacher I can walk well I made one of my famous statements I said walk woman walk that's all I think <laughs> Frank, she got her crutches, took them down the aisle, gave them to her husband and left. I said, boys, was she saved? I don't know. I forgot to ask. We ne- Jesus slipped one by us. We never even got to ask her whether she's saved or not. He'll work whether you like it or not. Will you be made whole? Take up your bed and walk. He didn't even say you got to believe in the Son of God. You got to believe God sent me. He said, wilt thou be made whole? He said, take up your bed and walk. I'll tell you that old boy. You, got, you know what? I don't understand us. We're going to make folks sick again trying to protect him after God healed him. Be careful. Then a lot of our people said, grab him. He ain't walked for, he ain't never walked, he'll fall and hurt himself. You'll have to learn him to walk away. He didn't have to. Got up and took that bed up and here he went. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise his name. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise his name. Get with it if you're going to worship God. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God with all our heart, all our soul. Everything you, yeah, gray matters, God. Where's I want to hear? You talk about it. Immediately he is made whole. Took up his bed and walked. But it is Sunday. Well, the Sabbath, wherever you believe it's at. It is the Sabbath. We've got a bunch of hypocrites in our church world. Don't mean what they say when they say they love people. All they love is church members. Right. Amen. But not Jesus. If he'd heal on the Sabbath, they'd say, There's six days in which a man ought to come and be healed, but not on the Holy Sabbath. It's all right for John to get his donkey out of the ditch, to water the old cow, and miss service because his, his mules is out, but not heal the sick. The very idea. Let them come some of them. What if they die for the next day? Let them die. Better let them die and just have them healed. Because it breaks our tradition. Sure. Hey, don't dance that way in my church. I don't care whether they're doing it. Or not. <laughs> We've got so tied up on tradition till you can't hardly get folks to God. We've got so wound up on what we want to do and why Grandpa done it and Grandma done it. Uh, we had a church where we had communion service as a snuff dipper and two more than one in there. They'd drink out of that. They had two glasses. I tore the thing up when I got there. I got a bunch of communion glasses. I said, I'm not a drinking out of nobody's glass that dip snuff. <laughs> oh, ruined the church. You're not supposed to walk on the Sabbath day. Lay back down. Get sick again. Words I want to hear. Even if I don't agree with nobody. Do you know what they done to me when they called to examine me for the army? I wasn't with anybody's church and have due respect unto all God's children. And whatever church they're in, do you hear me? I don't fight them. But you know what? I didn't know what to say. He had a questionnaire sent to me like you ain't read, I guess said, who do you work for? I put down God. I was a full-time evangelist at that time. And they said, what is your wages? I put down whatever God gives. They said, when did you start this work? I said, when God saved me. When do you intend to stop it? When the Lord comes or calls. What tools do you use? I put down the Bible. What do you work on? I put down people. Oh, glory. I was doing my best with what I had. They called me in a few days, and a fellow set me stark naked, and a fellow had a little flashlight in a little room. Psychologist, psychiatrist, or psy something. Shine that flashlight in my face, me standing stark naked. Did you ever talk to God? I couldn't figure it out. I said yes, and he grabbed his pencil on me, LL. Watching me so I couldn't get away. He said, uh, did you hear the voice of God? I said, yes. Whatever some folks ain't heard, you haven't heard it. Wrote that all down, finally let me put my clothes back on, sent me into a big officer. He said, son, are you going into the army? I'm ah, just a new babe in Christ. I said, I ain't going to kill nobody. I said, LD now, I have respect on our boys that lay on the sod. I have respect on you boys that was in the surf. But listen, now, LD now, I told you strange. 
And you know, I'd studied Matthew, the fifth chapter, more than any book, any, any book in the chapter in the Bible. He said, didn't Jesus lose a big battle one time? I said, no, sir, he didn't. He said, didn't he say an eye for an eye and a tooth for two? Yes, sir. I said, he did. And the next verse under that 39th verse says, but I say unto you that you resist not evil, but whosoever smiteth thee, and once you turn to him, the other also. Put me in 4F. Men on trouble. Carried me in there for a while, put me in 4D. Reclassified me five times. Woo! We have mercy. <laughs> I want to hear the angels singing. I want you to hear some good things. I want you to enjoy some good things. And God does too. A lot of times we're not going to if we don't watch how we do. In the fourth chapter of John, I'm going to have to hurry. I don't have much to say tonight. As a woman come to the well of Samaria and said, Jesus, give me a drink of water. I mean, I beg your pardon. Jesus said to the woman of Samaria, give me a drink of water. I had a song in my mind the same time I was trying to read that. I know you've heard it. King Jesus was walking through the land. On his way he got weary with his disciples, a gospel man. They stopped at the well of Samaria. You sing it, don't you? If you don't sing a little more, we all sing that here. No man loved me like Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. No man loves me like Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. On the well, the Lord sat down. His disciples went and left him. A woman from the Samaria town, a drink he did request of her. If you had asked a drink of me, regardless of your nation, the waters I would have given you are the waters of salvation. Why do you ask a drink of me with an evasive feeling? You know by law the Samaritans and Jews have no dealing. No dealing. I like to hear him say what he said to that woman. You had asked a drink of me, regardless of your nation. The waters I would have given you are the waters of salvation. No man loves me like Jesus. No matter about your color. Had nothing to do with it. Your weight? Uh uh. No. Your speech? No. I want to hear him say, I'll give you water. Be in you a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. Those are most important words. They were so important until it stopped Jesus at the Samaritan well and had him talk to a little woman that folks would talk about him for talking to her. Mm -hmm. Bad woman. She's a bad woman. Yes, people in our church world would say, you don't need to come here to this church. You're a bad woman. That ain't the way Jesus... I like what Jesus says. I love them words he said. Outlaws and moonshiners and wicked bad people. There's old Zacchaeus up in that tree. I want to hear some words from the Lord. Looked up there, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. Today I must abide at thy house. I can put near him and say when he's coming down the tree, he's going to go home with me. Going to go home with me. He's, he's going home to my house. Think of it. He's going down to be with me today. Hit the ground and said, if I've taken anything from any man false, I'll restore him fourfold. This day Jesus said, salvation come to his house. I love to hear them words. We in the night a while back, about one o'clock, been off preaching away down the country time and time again. Young man rebellious. Young man rebellious. About 20 year old. Wouldn't give his heart to God. Daddy led the song for years. Wouldn't give in. One night the phone rung. Hit us him. On the other end, he said, I've got salvation tonight, Brother Moore. He said, I've got saved tonight. said, God has saved me. He said, I've got seven more calls to make. And at one in the morning, i got to call seven more to tell them I liked it. This day is salvation come to his house. You know, he may be back there, but there's an old boy here this morning. He is sitting away back yonder. I talked to him a while ago. He weighs quite a bit like I used to. I used to be quite a bit huskier than I am now. He said this morning, said, I got more out of this service. He said, I'll tell you, I heard some things I need. Could you tell he is a wanting to do something, L.L.? He is stirred. That old boy, sir. He said, I've been all over. I've been to churches all around. I've heard more. He said, I'm just talking about Brother Moore now. He visited here last Sunday, I think. He said, I've heard more in this church the last two Sundays than I've heard of all the running I've been doing. It's time I need to do something. Listen. God will let you share some good news. I mean, he'll speak something to you. It'll be worth its weight in gold. I mean, he'll give you something valuable. Amen. Words I want to hear. Luke 1, 19, the Bible said, And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to shew thee these glad tidings. Poor, poor old boy. He, he kind of got into it. Zacharias, he lost his speech for a while. 
because he doubted the angel. The angel doesn't been talking to him quite a while. Want to bless you with a child. Talking to him about it. Tell him what to do about it. Tell him how to raise it. What's God going to do? And he doubted him. But the angel said, I'm Gabriel that stand in the presence of God thousands and thousands of years old. Here to Daniel back there hundreds and hundreds of years before that. Here he is back on the scene again. He ain't got the authorities for nothing. You can't tell his age to minute. I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. Why, God had interplanetary travel going on long before we made anything and spit, fire, and melt, smoke, and go around the world 25,000 miles an hour. Why, he had angels coming back and forth for ages. What was that old boy's name God took years ago and uh, went home with God around 300 years old and, and, uh, and he just, God took him. Enoch. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. He had interplanetary travel going on long before we had Oha. Amen. I want to hear the angels sing. I, us going over there to that. I'm going to skip a bunch of stuff because I'm worrying you. you, you you've been good. I love you. Look here, the 14th chapter of Revelation. I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion. Which one? Well, they put him in the tomb, but the tomb couldn't hold him. And never was a man like Jesus. He never was a man like Jesus. Never was a man like Jesus. He rolled my burden away. That's who he is. I looked and behold, a lamb stood on Mount Zion. They killed him. They beat him. They whipped him. The blood has run down his brow. They have cut open his side. They have put him in the grave. And the devil screamed in the streets of Jerusalem and said, God is dying. Yeah. That betrayer is gone. Seal his tomb. Set a guard. He's an imposter. He's a liar. Right. Well... Put him in the tomb, but the tomb couldn't hold him. And never was a man like Jesus. Come out of there. Nobody had to help him up. Got up and untied that off his head. Rolled it, laid it down to the side of the napkin. He had about it. Laid it down. John 10 and 18, he said, to take it not from me. I lay it down to myself. This command have I received of my Father. I can lay it down. Take it up again. Ain't nobody else can do it. And nobody died and could get themselves back out of it. And nobody passed away since the beginning of uh, the world could lay down in death and get themselves back out of it. Jesus could. I have power to lay it down and take it back up again. It won't get me wiped out till I get back up. <whistles> Looked in low lamb stood on Mount Zion. Had 144,000 choir with him. Whoo! I don't reckon the TV cameras could cover that choir. 144,000. Everybody singing once now. Hallelujah. Watch out. Woo! While I was 19, no, 18 years old, in the outlaw mountains of Oklahoma where Ma Barker and Pretty Boy Floyd and a bunch of others, Jesse, hid the money. I know where some's at now. Brother Moore, you're a liar. You're going to have to face God if you say that. I know pretty close to vicinity where there's some buried right now. Last time I went to try to hunt it, a fellow throwed a 30-30 down on me. I thought he was going to kill me. I ain't been back. They buried it out there all the time. Bob Newsom buried this. Do you want me to get closer to it let you know what I'm saying? So you won't think of a liar? Bob Newsom buried this money. It's out from Sticker, Oklahoma. Me and Uncle Dave went in there, and he is 85 and I was 20. He's been gone for years. We got about where's that to throw the gun down on us. They know it's in our tube, didn't know where it's at. We knew. Hi. You think we're liar? No, you don't. You believe me. Get back to Bible. That's going to throw you off. Had 144,000 choir having his father's name written in the forehead. Got him a great bunch up there. I heard the voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Yeah. Lost the thought when I got on the gold mine hunt or the money hunt, but you yeah, do well without it. He must have a harp factory somewhere over by his kitchen, I guess, where he made the manna and fed a million people for 40 years with it. He may have it over by his gold mine where he mines pure gold. We don't mind that pure gold. We never mind enough gold in the history of uh, uh, keeping of records of gold mines in Africa or anywhere else. 
to have a pure street of gold 1,500 miles long. So God somewhere or another has got a gold mine. And I want to hear this great singing when I get to the glory world. Angel rock me to sleep in the cradle of love. Bear me over the deep to heaven above. When the shadow shall fall and the Savior shall call. Angel rock me to sleep in the cradle of love. I want to hear the angels say. I want to hear God say well done. And while I live here, I want, him, want to hear him say, you're healed. You're saved. You're forgiven. Oh, so many things I'd like to. And this song, as it were, a new song before the throne, before the four beasts, the elders, no man could learn that song, but the 144,000 which was redeemed from the earth. Kind of remind me of a place once preached. I sung one of my little old jerky songs over there. I used to use my guitar, but I didn't bring it, and I could. I wouldn't have sung no better much. But I sung a song, and it stirred the church. And when I left, I tried to sing it, and I was gone. A year, I guess, to come back by. They said, Brother Moore, would you try to sing that for us again? We've tried to have way in the world sing that. We can't sing that song. Well, they just wasn't anointed to sing it. You hear people, I've tried to sing that. People tried to sing like they did. I said, they'll have to sing it for me. I can't sing that one. That is theirs. God is blessing them with that. Here's a song. Ain't nobody learning. I believe I can get to be. I've been hearing you. I was listening. I listened to you play. You got it. But someone will tell you one thing. You ain't going to be picked this tune up right here. You ever hear anybody running down a guitar the piano? Great people play everywhere. I've had some of the best friends play. Here it is, E flat. Here it is, G right here. This is great. Ain't nobody can learn this. Believe I'll sing with them. No, you won't. I want to hear this. Nobody but the 144,000. Nobody. I was in them outlaw mountains I was talking to you about. Driving down the road when I was 18 years old, fasting and praying for a revival meeting back down at Quentin, Oklahoma, right back to the side of Robert's Cave where they hid that money. You know what? I never told anybody for a long time. I was just a big old boy. Daddy didn't want me to preach. Mama didn't want me to preach. They didn't want me to know me to preach. I heard the heavenly choir. I never said nothing to nobody for months. At the same place in the road, two nights straight, I heard that choir. Beautiful singing I ever heard in my life. I heard it. I listened and listened. Coming through the ruby sir, I heard him saying, Oh, you talk about a song service. We fixing to have it. I want to hear the angels sing. I like to hear this 144,000. And here it is again. And I, I want to I wanna, I wanna close down on it uh, in the 15th chapter in the second verse. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and dim and had gotten a victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark, over the number's name. Stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sang a song of Moses, a servant of God, and a song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true of thy ways, thou King of saints. I want to hear the angels sing. Do you, do you really believe you're going to have to die? Do you really believe you're going to leave the world? Do you really going to have to face God? Well, we just well get ready to hear some good things then. Right. Now in hell, they don't have no singing. There ain't nobody humming or singing down there. We sing, dip your finger in the water and cool my tongue. They don't sing it down there. No. There ain't nobody singing down there. Right. Best singers that ever lived here, as far as the physical world and natural ability, many of them's there, but they ain't singing no more. They ain't singing no more. I want to hear some good things. I want to go where the angels sing. I want to hear them harps. I believe David probably play us a number. I think that's reading really Claude could sing. Well, little David, play on your harp. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Little David, play on your harp. Hallelujah. I believe they'll play. Let's stand. You've been in great meeting today. You've heard some great preaching from Brother Frank. Brother L.L.'s preached here for years, heard some of the very best, and we're so happy to join in with him and say a few words about the Lord. But are you here without God? Are you here and you need deliverance from something? You'd like to get loose from the problem you've got and get up close to God and be happy. Will you come down here? Will you come down here? It won't take but just a little bit. It's early. Get this thing straightened out with God. Be able to hear them things you need to hear after a while. How about it? Is there a one? Step out, Brother Moore, I'm hungry. I want more of God. I'm in trouble. You know it's a sight, but while folks are happy, having cookouts and eating the hamburgers and hot dogs and having a good time this 4th of July, there's folks that ain't. There's folks that's sad. Come on. If you need help tonight, there's good things for you. There's a Savior that can say to you, your sins are gone. 
You're healed. You're blessed. You're helped. Is there somebody? Will you come? Take it, Brother L.L. Do what you feel like. Amen. I've got the time. Amen. I've got the time. I'll stay right here with you. I'll leave all of it. There's some things you won't want to hear. Depart from me. You are cursed with iniquity. To the man that had not on the wedding garment, think about it, it was free. The king provided the garment. But he said, I'll do my own thing. Son, how camest thou in here without the wedding garment on? He didn't say one word. He was speechless. And the Lord didn't change the verdict. He said, bind him hand and foot. It's an insult to refuse God's gift. It is such an insult to the holiness and the love of God. He said, bind him hand and foot and cast him into outer darkness. To refuse the free gift is to have the gift withdrawn. You won't want to hear him say, these men will never taste of my supper. It was free. Paid for by the king. Paid for by the great man. But they wouldn't come. Go into the highways and hedges. Call the lame, halt, and blind. Everybody you find. Furnish my table guests. But none of these that were bidden shall taste of my supper. Gift refused. Message from God refused. Invitation withdrawn. Too late. Too late to go back and do it over. The insult descended to the lowest hell. It opened a crevice In the bottomless pit, the lake of fire, and flames like bony fingers reached out and beckoned to you like they own you. Like you belong to them. They enveloped your feet, pulled you down. Another weekend is over. Tomorrow, a day of frivolity, drinking, big beer busts, and wickedness and ungodless, illicit, ungodly acts as America parties on one of its holidays, and then they wonder why it won't rain. Has God spoken to your heart? Have you heard His voice? I feel like Brother Moore has a message from God unto us. I didn't tell him nothing but good about you. Nothing but good about anybody here. Amen. I have nothing but good to say about you. Because I love you. You are my joy. And my crown. My crown of rejoicing. But some of you are not ready to meet God. Don't turn him away. You haven't been a success because you've hardened your heart time after time and turned him away. No, no, no. The devil couldn't have asked you to do any more than reject the Lord. Who are you going to listen to tonight? 
I tell you, my friend, my blessed neighbor, praise God, loved ones, oh, little children, young folks, dads and moms, I wouldn't give another day of my life to the devil. Not another second. Not another moment. As they sing, let's come around God's altar tonight. Give it all to Jesus.